Hello everyone and welcome to this short teaser of my original talk called Play Emacs Like an Instrument. My name is Alain and if you want to reach me you can send an email to alain at 200ok.ch. This is what we're going to do. I'll give a quick introduction to the topic, I'll give a couple different impressions on what Emacs can look like, then we're going to define some of the terms that are used in the original talk then it's time to play Emacs like an instrument. And I'll finish up with some closing words. So I have this proposition. Most work on the computer is based on either text processing or text consumption. Let that sink in for a second. I mean, some parts are obviously like this, for example, email, but other things are exactly the same. For example, bookkeeping is mainly text. I mean, you might have a fancy GUI, but inherently it's text-based. Or invoicing, or project management, or time tracking, or estimations, or writing slides, a book. Uh, many, many different things might look different uh, in, in this modern day and age, but in fact, they are really based on text processing or text consumption. So I would say not having a general text editor at your disposal is like being a carpenter and only having a hammer in the toolbox. I mean, you can get lots of stuff done using a hammer. However, it might be really inconvenient if you want to put a screw into the wall. And it's the same with other kinds of programs. And for all these text-based tasks, I would say Emacs is great because it's a great general text processor. Inherently, it's not even a text editor. Inherently, Emacs is a Lisp REPL, so even the text editor itself is just a program running within Emacs. All the programs that run within Emacs are self-documenting, so you can see anything that's going on and understand all of it. And not only that, you can change it drastically. Not only can you use the vast amounts of programs that come with Emacs and are uh, built in the community, but you can put them together in various combinations and write your own. So for me, uh, Emacs is really the Swiss army knife, not of text processors, but ultimately of programs. So. This is a lightning talk. It's a teaser of my original talk. I'll just give you an impression on whether it's worth for you to watch the original talk or not. In the original, I'm going to cover a lot of ground. That's because I spent most of my computer time in Emacs, I would say about 90%. And I do spend quite a lot of time on the computer. Uh, so I'm also going to give you lots of background info. And the original talk is really not a lightning talk. It's about two hours long. Okay, so uh, let's do some impressions of Emacs. Or you could call them the faces of Emacs because it can look very differently depending on what you're doing. So let me start with this presentation here. It's uh, obviously inception time. So for example, this talk uh, is happening right within Emacs. So I'm uh, showing a PDF right now. And not only is Emacs a great PDF viewer and annotator, no, I even actually created this PDF right within Emacs. Uh, I'm using a built-in tool for that called org mode. And let me quickly split uh, the view. So now on the right, you still have the PDF. On the left, you have the original uh, document. So uh, for example, the introduction, I didn't even show this one. For example, this information that I gave you about the lightning talk is just text. It's all just text and it's being nicely converted into this nice looking PDF. In the background, it's uh, using other technology than just Emacs, for example, LaTeX and Beamer and some templating, but that's nicely abstracted away. So Emacs is also great, not only for writing text, but also generating PDFs. Can be slides, can be books, can be quotes, can be invoices, can be all kinds of different things. Of course, Emacs is also great as an email program. There's 
actually many different email programs that run within Emacs. I'm using the one called Move for Emacs, uh, which you can see a screenshot of right now. Uh, it's very convenient, very easy to use, very fast as well. And uh, also you can see here that not only can you see text-based emails, but you can also uh, create and consume HTML-based emails right within Emacs. So uh, you can even see the emails that newsletters send you, uh, Outlook uh, users send you, all these things, not a problem whatsoever. However, you can integrate all your emails nicely into other stuff, for example, your to-do-based workflow, estimations, projects, it's very, very nice. Uh, also, if you're a, a Git uh, user, uh, there's good news. There is a great uh, front end for Git uh, called Megit. Uh, it's very convenient. I'm using it all the time, not only within programming projects, but for anything that is text based, actually. It's very nice. Right here, you can see a commit and a diff from within this commit on the right and on the left a list of uh, commits that happened. Uh, going into detail here also is far beyond the scope because my Git is huge. You can use Emacs for any kind of organization. So you can do spreadsheets, project planning, time tracking, bookkeeping, and it's amazing how much further you can go with org mode than with other tools. For example, spreadsheets are mighty powerful. They are embedded in side the other text so it's not like having excel on the one hand and word on the other it's having both in the same context and not only that you can feed your spreadsheets information from uh, all over the place you can even run code to feed it information you can then uh, do calculations within the table you can use the final uh, uh, numbers from the table within the uh, pros of your uh, text. It's very, very versatile. It's really literally amazing what org mode can do. Of course, you can also uh, browse the web, which is nice. It's completely distraction and tracking free because it doesn't run JavaScript. I mean, obviously, that's not for uh, everything. But for example, for reading feeds, it's great. Uh, there is a great feed reader called LFeed. And uh, usually you can just uh, uh, read the stuff within. If they uh, cut the feed short, you can browse them using the built-in browser called uh, EWW. Uh -huh. Of course, if you need some JavaScript, you will go to a different browser like Firefox. Some people might even use Emacs for coding. So for example, right here, I'm testing some closure code with a, a plugin called Cider. It's very nice, very convenient, very powerful. It's the best, actually the best IDE experience for many different languages out there. Right here you can see a test uh, a run, uh, 70, so, sorry, 47 tests ran, but one assertion failed and it's very nice and gives me the diff. Okay, so I, there's many, many different uh, options I could have shown. But uh, suffice it to say, we have infinite diversity and infinite combinations. Well, then what is actually Emacs? So uh, Emacs originally was an acronym for editor macros. And it's back from the 70s, from 1976. So it's ancient. I mean, every other kind of old software that you might know is very young compared to that. For example, Vim is from 1991. Or Linux is also from 1991. I mean, only C is slightly older, 1972. But Emacs is still going very strong. It's the mother of all free software. If you're interested in that, you can head MX, describe GNU project, and then read more about GNU, Emacs, the GPL, Free Software Foundation, and all these things. Uh, so it really is uh, an important part in the free software movement and still is. If you don't know GNU, let me give you this short teaser. Uh, GNU is an operating system that is free software. That means it respects users' freedom. And the development of GNU made it possible to use a computer. 
without software that would trample your freedom. So that's important. Now in the original talk, I would go into playing Emacs like an instrument. So I would say that's the meat part. And I would go into live Emacs usage. I would announce all the features that I'm touching and people could uh, have asked uh, questions all the time. Obviously nothing could have gone wrong uh, during that. Uh, this is my uh, home setup for uh, coding. That's my home office. Okay, so closing words. If you like this short teaser, please check out the original talk. You can find it on uh, our website, 200ok.ch, or click the link here. It looks like this. There's a little bit of information. The talk itself, there's links to the slides. If you don't want to watch the uh, uh, long talk, you can also continue on your own. Uh, those are the shortcuts for the Emacs tutorial, manual, all the info manuals of the programs that I mentioned. Or you can go to 200ok.ch and read uh, more about Emacs and org mode because we frequently write about it. And if you're interested on how to set up Emacs to do all those things, uh, there's a good option as well. I have, a, uh, I have my configuration for Emacs uh, yeah, on GitHub. And it's very interesting because I can uh, configure Emacs using literate programming. So if I go to the repository, you see lots of pros going on here with some code embedded. And so the pros and the code actually itself is my configuration. So it's nicely uh, nice to read and nice to understand, follow along, copy the snippets that you like. So if you like this talk, please head over to my Emacs repository uh, go through the email, uh, read me and enjoy some magical powers. If you like that, please put a star on the repository. Okay, thank you for your time and have a great time using Emacs.